All right, so this is Steven Chin for nighthacking.com, and I'm going to be doing a series of Java One interviews with different speakers and noteworthy folks who will be at the upcoming conference from September 22nd through September 26th in um, San Francisco. The first guest I have on is Garrett Grunwald. Let me introduce Garrett. I have him here via Skype. How are you doing, Garrett? Hey, I'm fine. Thanks. So Garrett is better known as Han Solo. That's his Twitter handle. Um, he works for Canoe as a um, um, what, what would you what was your official job capacity there? Well, that, that's a good question. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's it's something like uh, Java FX Evangelist. Cool. So something you're like you're like my peer, like since I'm a, a Java Java FX Evangelist at Oracle. You're like my peer over there at Canoe. Yes, I try to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you're giving like a huge number of sessions at Java One this year. So your your last count was eight. Yeah, it's around eight. I have seven on my official list, and one is on a list that I can't see. So, but I know that I have one more. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I didn't expect that. <laughs> It was just uh, yeah, talking to many people and trying to get something in, and suddenly nearly everything was accepted. <laughs> okay, so speaking of what's accepted, give us a quick um, rundown of some of the sessions. I have your screen up now. Yes, okay. So first of all, we have the, the Raspberry Pi JavaFX Showdown, which is uh, a session that I have with a guy named Stephen Chin. No, and, I don't know who that uh, is. Yeah, I don't know. He's, he's crazy, that, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, that will be really a fun session. And the idea came to me last year during Java One. So the idea is to involve the community in showing their stuff at a session. Most of the times you, you created something at home, which is not worth uh, for a whole Java One session, but maybe worth for 10 minutes, just showing it to others and uh, spreading the word. So, and the idea is to give these people the chance to show their JavaFX related stuff on Raspberry Pi. Cool. We will see how that works out. Yeah, that's, that, that's the first thing on my list, which is, that's an easy one for me. The next one is something I never expected that it will be accepted. It's uh, use the force loop or tips and tricks that's, for that's using the capabilities. That's a very um, ap <laughs> appropriate title, apropos title. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, uh, it was really just uh, an idea. I can't really tell you when I put in the proposal. It, I was uh, really sitting on the, <laughs> you know, where and with my iPad. And then, oh, yeah, that might be a good title. <laughs> and uh, send in the proposal. Yeah, that, uh, that's fun. And I'm not done with this. So, yeah, I have to figure out what makes sense to show. The next one will be um, a session that I have together with uh, Todd which is uh, Todd Costella from Canada. And it's about visualizing data from uh, embedded devices and visualizing data with JavaFX. So this will be about uh, using a Raspberry Pi measuring data uh, somewhere else and visualizing it either on a desktop or in the browser or on, a, um, on the other Raspberry Pi. That sounds That's ambitious. Like. Yeah, that will be fun. It's again a session that came to my mind during last year's Java One, during the Ride to uh, Appreciation event. We discussed that idea and here we go. So yeah, that will be fun. Then the never ending story about custom controls. Uh, now that uh, Jonathan won't be at Java One, unfortunately, I thought I could skip this session, but now um, that he's not there, he asked me, I'm free to, to do this. Uh, a create your own Java FX8 control session. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, not nice next. that Jonathan's not going to be there. We all, yeah, we're all going to yeah, miss Jonathan. But definitely. But there's a good reason for him <laughs> to be not at Java One. Yeah. So, yeah. We we're going to get lots of good controls yeah. and <laughs> code and. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely. So what else do I have? Then I have, uh, there's a RIA Technologies and Frameworks panel, which is with more people. I'm just one of five, <laughs> I think, well, which will be fun. I think this is also nothing I have to really much prepare for. Yeah. And then something that I have together with um, Simon Ritter, 
It's, uh, and Bob, oh, you're uh, gonna do the leap motion, motion stuff with Simon. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So for folks who don't know what leap motion, the leap motion device is, can you describe it in 30 seconds? In 30 seconds. So it's something like the Microsoft Kinect. So it's a controller for your, for, where you can use your hands or your or one hand, move it over the controller, and then you can get the coordinates of the fingers, the uh, the palm, and the position of the palm and the fingers and all that stuff. And it's really uh, sensitive. So that means if you move fast, you will get all the events of the of each finger and the all the coordinates. And you can use it to control whatever you like, games, or you can also control the mouse. Or, oh, wow. So, yeah, it's really interesting. But uh, it will give me some headache. I'm pretty sure about that because uh, the stuff that I would, li would like to show is not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> And that's not related to JavaFX or the um, the leap motion. It's because I need a 3D physics engine that works. Yeah, with doesn't Java. The, the way the leap motion works, most of the 3D processing is done on the host computer, not on the device, right? Yes. Yeah. And the problem is that if you just move things in the, with the same uh, coordinates way that your hand creates, that's no problem in JavaFX. But if you need a physics engine, and that was my idea. Then it's different. Then because the physics engine needs again its own 3D model, and you have to update all the transformations. And unfortunately, they use different coordinate systems. So that's really a hack to to get it right. And that's why I'm on right now to okay. figure out how to do it. And then the last one's a GUI makeover. Oh yeah, that that's the the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> because that will be really fun. It's a two-hour tutorial session together uh, switch with to your, uh, um, your app while we're chatting ah, okay yes so it's a two hour tutorial session that we that I have with um, Anton Apple from Munich also Java champion cool and we made this this idea came up when we did some night hacking at my place where he, when he visited me and yeah we had a couple of beers I think it was too much and late at night, we had the idea to propose maybe something together, which is the extreme GUI makeup. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And then we made the decision that if this will be accepted, we will come in Bavarian uh, clothing. So <laughs> that means leather pants. Hats, All right. I'm definitely coming for that one. That'll be entertaining. Yeah. And I lost another bed that, uh, that I have to color my hair red, like a canoe red. So. <laughs> I will be look like a jerk, <laughs> but it will be fun. <laughs> okay, so tell us a little bit about what this is that we're seeing on your on your desktop. Yeah, now you should see. Um, yeah, that's something I'm working on um, for the session that I have together with uh, Todd. It's about the data visualization from the Raspberry Pi measured data, and it's a JavaFX application where I created some controls that you can see on top of these gauges. And also the charts that you can see in the, in the middle of the screen. So the idea is um, because this should also run on a, on a Raspberry Pi. And you know, if you create a chart, then each of these uh, dots will be a node on the scene graph. And you have to be careful with nodes on the scene graph and in Pi. So I created all that stuff by myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing right now to get it running. And uh, this is actually, I think, around 90 nodes, the whole thing. And this is more than one graph. It's, I have also the last 12 hours and also the last 24 hours. So I can uh, measure data and put it on a MongoDB on the web. And then this application will put the dat uh, get the data from the, from the web and display uh, the measured data from, for example, the last hour. And on top in the gauges, you see the the real measured values that are, I think, in steps of 10 seconds. So if I would now take the, uh, the thing in my hand, I will see the, the temperature increasing. Oh, my telephone's ringing, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on the stream, we, we have a bunch of folks um, watching the live stream. And okay. Mike Talon had a question for you. He was wondering... Um, you know, you mentioned that you're trying to keep the number of nodes in the scene graph small. Are there any other functions and controls which are not supported or have problems on the Pi or ARM devices in general that you know of? Yeah, and on the Pi, you you can't use the web view at the moment, which is a little bit, yeah, I, unfortunate. But um, I'm not sure it will come. Um, there are some rumors, but at the moment it's not in, so you can't use the web view in HTML. 
The other thing that I really miss is, and that's it about controls. I think everything else is working on the Pi, but you are, what you are missing is uh, the media, and especially the audio clip is something that I miss on the Pi, because um, this is so useful if you would like to get some audio feedback from a Pi. You can connect easily some speakers to the Pi, but it's a little bit tricky to get the sound uh, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I was chatting with Jasper about this. So here's a good workaround for video where you can create a transparent scene. Yeah. And then display video under your JavaFX application. But the audio is a little bit more annoying. You'd actually have to script a background native process to do the audio. Yeah, so. it works. It's it's, uh, But, you know, because the audio clip has this low latency, and that's what I really like about it. So if you have some signal and you would like to play a noise then it's there instantly yeah and that's that's something that i really miss but i i could the media stuff is not that important for me but have um, you have you tried the, the 3d audio. stuff um not yet so okay. because for the 3d stuff i have not really a use case that i really could say this is something that must be done in 3d right so it's nice to have but i think on an embedded device not really need it maybe it depends on the use case so for me i have no use case at the moment yeah yeah so i think the the answer in that is that it's it's in there right now if you want to use it um so yeah, the 3d yeah. support works. you can use it yeah that's that's for sure but yeah, it's usable um, i don't think it's on the official supported list for eight yet it's it's not i i thought it is on the list i have no idea so i just saw that uh, you know the video of that jasper shows at fx dot uh, fx experience dot com there's a link of this uh, video and there he shows some 3d stuff which is nice and fast but yeah for this kind of stuff it makes sense but if you have uh, i'm thinking more about uh, scientific stuff where i have uh, yeah. panels on the pie that show some data and 3d yeah maybe i have no idea at the moment i have no use case cool all right so um anything else you want to mention related to java one Maybe some people um, move to Java One. <laughs> <laughs> Let's rock the house. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's gonna uh, be great this if year. If you have the chance to go there, you should go there. It's the best conference ever. <laughs> so, it's it really is. You have the chance to meet all the people. It's so great. I love it. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time, Garrett, and uh, we'll, we'll look forward to me. seeing you in San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to see you too.